Guys, today we are going to discuss about the renin angiotensinogen aldosterone system. Renin angiotensinogen nearly about of the 70% of the cardiac output supply to the kidney. From the 100% to the 20% of the blood go toward the kidney with the help of the afferent artery. This one is the afferent artery. And the 20% of the blood enter into the glomerulus with the help of the efferent artery when there is a low blood pressure or due to any problem due to any hemorrhagic shock due to accident the blood is lost and there is a low level of the blood then there is present of the specific receptor on the wall of the renal artery these receptors are known as a glomerulus these receptors cause the release of the renin from the glomerulus cells this receptor cause the release of the renin from the glomerulus cell when this renin will release and in the normal level the angiotensinogen is released from the liver from the liver the angiotensinogen is released angiotensinogen this angiotensinogen tensinogen is in inactive form this renin angio angiotensinogen is in active form and this is present into the blood and when the blood pressure is low then this renin act on the angio angiotensinogen and cause the activation of the angiotensinogen into the angiotensin 1 it cause the activation of the angiotensin 1 this all happen with the help of the enzyme which is known as a renin and this angiotensin 1 when enter into the lungs then there is present of the enzyme which is known as the angio angiotensin converting enzyme this angiotensin converting enzyme cause the conversion of the angiotensin 1 into the angiotensin 2 this cause the conversion of the angiotensin 1 and the angiotensin 2 then the what to do the angiotensin 2 this angiotensin 2 act on the adrenal gland and through the adrenal gland it cause the release of the hormone which is known as a aldosterone this is known as a aldosterone this aldosterone cause the reabsorption of the sodium into the blood reabsorption of the sodium into the blood when it causes to the increase the level of the sodium water always follow the sodium so water will also enter into the into the blood vessel so in result the venous return will be high and the cardiac output will also be high and the blood pressure will come into normal condition with the help of the aldosterone and through the second mechanism it causes the release of the adh adh it is known as the antidiuretic hormone this antidiuretic hormone causes the increase the level of the aquaporin this aquaporin causes the reabsorption of the water when increase the level of the reabsorption of the water then it causes to the increase the venous return toward the heart so in result the cardiac output will be high and the blood pressure will become into normal form and it also causes to the vasoconstriction vasoconstriction when the vasoconstriction will be occur so it causes to the increase the resistance so in result it causes to increase the level of the total peripheral resistance and the total peripheral resistance is directly proportional to the blood pressure so when the blood pressure will be low angiotensin 2 causes to the vasoconstriction and the vasoconstriction ca and the vasoconstriction is directly proportional to the blood pressure so the blood pressure will also come into their normal form it also caused to increase the sympathetic activity increase the sympathetic activity increase the sympathetic activity so with the help of all these mechanism the blood pressure will uh, come into the normal form and when the blood pressure will be high for example when the blood pressure is a 
high then there is also present of the receptor this is known as a re blood pressure receptor through then with the help of the juxtaglomerular cells juxtaglomerular cells decrease or inhibit the release of the renin when there is a decrease the inhibition of the renin so in this way the renin will not release and when the renin will not release so the angiotensinogen will not active and converted into the angiotensin 1 so the blood pressure will also come to the normal form or to the normal state and for example any blood pressure patient come to us we give the medicine mostly angiotensinogen angiotensin converting enzyme this angiotensin converting enzyme is basically present into the endothelial of the lungs when it will be inhibited then the angiotensin 1 will not convert into the angiotensin 2 it also we use the drugs for the angiotensin 1 inhibition we also can use the drug inhibition of the renin when the renin will not release all mechanism will be blocked when the angiotensin will not will be released then the all mechanism will be blocked and so all this so if we come to the quick review when the blood pressure will be low from the kidney it causes to the release of the renin from the juxtaglomerular cells and it causes the activation of the angiotensinogen which was released from the liver into the angiotensin 1 this angiotensin 1 when will be entered into the lungs then this in, into the endothelial there is present of the angiotensin converting enzyme this angiotensin converting enzyme cause the conversion of the angiotensin 1 into the angiotensin 2 this angiotensin 2 cause the release of the aldosterone from the aldo, uh, adrenal gland this cause the reabsorption of the sodium when the sodium will be reabsorbed water will be followed so the venous return will be high and the cardiac output will be high and it also cause to the effect on the pituitary gland from the posterior gland it posterior pituitary gland and it cause to release of the adh which is also known as the antidiuretic hormone so in this way h2o reabsorption occur and the venous return of uh, high vasoconstriction vasoconstriction cause to increase the total peripheral resistance and in this way when the total peripheral resistance will be high the blood pressure will be also high so all through the all this mechanism our blood pressure is controlled